episode of the New Leaf Podcast. This is a podcast about knitting and crocheting and also a little bit of hand dyeing yarn lately and basically my way of documenting my journey to becoming a full-time knitwear and crochet designer. My name is Carmen and you can find me on Instagram as newleafdesigns.nl. I also have a blog newleafdesigns.nl and you can find all of the other things right here on the screen. So I have another jam-packed episode planned today. I hope to not make it as long as the last episode though because that was a little bit excessive and I hope you guys didn't mind. I do have another uh, dye vlog to put in today but I didn't shoot as much footage to just keep it on the shorter side. Um, but a lot of you mentioned that you really like it so I did want to put it in. So that will be coming towards the end. I will start off with um, an, an announcement about the crochet along that is going to be happening. I forgot to bring my shawl again. <laughs> it happened the last time again. I only brought the yarn. Well, one second. All right, so <laughs> we're going to have a crochet along for the Breeze Blocks shawl, which is a pattern of mine um, that you can find in my Ravelry store as Breeze Blocks. There's also a winter version with mohair called Freeze Blocks. And basically, if you buy the one, you get two patterns. So the Breeze Blocks and Freeze Blocks, doesn't matter which one you buy, you will always get the two patterns. Um, yes, yeah, so it's a crochet pattern and we're going to be doing a crochet along with it from June 1st to August the 1st. So that'll give you two months in the holiday season to get your crochet on and, um, yeah, crochet at the beach or uh, in the mountains or wherever you go on holiday. I will be crocheting my new version from this uh, Scapius Whirl yarn and it's in the colorway Banana Cream High. The colorways of Scapius Whirl are always very delicious. Um, this one was called Blueberry Bam Bam and there are others, there are um, colorways here on the tag. Fruitio 2D, Melting Macaron, uh, Blackberry Minchip. Yeah, there's a zillion colorways and they're all amazing. So, um, so the crochet along will start on June 1st. And on June the 3rd, I will be going on holiday. So I, I will be taking this whip with me. Um, if you can't wait until June 1st, no problem because whips are allowed in this uh, crochet along which means that you can start earlier um, or you can continue with your breeze blocks whip if maybe you started it last year but you kind of lack the motivation to finish it no problem just enter it into this crochet along just be sure to finish it by August the 1st um, yeah, because there may be some prizes, and if you um, finish before August the 1st, then you will uh, be entered into the giveaway if you post your pictures into the Revelry thread, that is. And also, there will be a 10% discount on the pattern, so both for the Breeze Blocks as for the Mohair version with uh, the, no, the Winter version with Mohair not the more hair version with winter, uh, called freeze block. So there will be a 10% discount on those patterns. Remember, you only need to buy one, okay? So don't go buying both of them. Um, and if you want to partake in this crochet along with the mohair version, that is totally fine, but please don't enter any other shawl patterns into this knit along, uh, crochet along. So, yeah, um, so there's going to be a 10% discount, no code needed, um, yes, so if you don't have the pattern yet, you can buy it for 10% um, less uh, until June the 2nd, so the day after the cal officially starts. Alright, that was about everything I wanted to mention about the crochet long. Now I have a couple of finished socks to show you. They are my sock blank socks that I almost finished last time. 
<laughs> they were from the Alice in Wonderland sock blank that I got from Het Wolbeest, which is a Dutch indie dyer. And it was so much fun to knit these socks. And um, <laughs> I'm not quite sure, I'm still on the fence about what I think of them because, you know, the sock blank was super pretty and then the socks are, you know, a bunch of squiggly lines. But um, I still like them. Uh, I only wish that there hadn't been so much beige in it. But yeah, anyway, it was really, really fun to knit with. And I get a new pair of socks at the end. So I turned them inside out. So the pearl side is facing outwards as I think it's prettier for this one. I haven't blocked them yet. I, I got a lot of reactions that um, blocking them will fix all of the bumps and irregularities, so I will still do that. Um, I actually thought of it yesterday, but if I had done it then, then I wouldn't be able to share the socks now. So yeah, I will do that straight after. I've done a garter stitch short row heel. Uh, so basically it's the German short row heel uh, where I have a tutorial for on my YouTube channel that's how to knit a German short row heel, I think. <laughs> uh, but then instead of purling, you also knit the wrong side rows. And it makes for a snugger heel. Well, not really actually. Uh, it makes for a stretchier heel, but because the heels on my socks always tend to look too big or they always tend to have those two pointy uh, corners that just stick out. So the garter um, kind of uh, keeps the fabric together a little bit and um, yeah, it fits really well for me. So, um, but it doesn't always look nice because it has texture, so yeah. I actually haven't tried walking on these, so I'll have to put re I have to report back on how the garter stitch heel actually feels underfoot. I actually did a little experiment since I last saw you because um, the second sock I was almost finished with the leg, or I was about I think halfway finished, but um, I took it to the cinema with me. I knit in the cinema for the first time and doing that um, I usually uh, knit continental style but in, to knit blind I actually have to throw so um, but if I do continental and throwing style in one um, project it might mean some gauge differences so uh, but I decided I didn't really care about these socks so that I could practice with it so I took them to the cinema we went to see the Avengers Inf Infinity War it was an amazing movie <laughs> and um, yeah so I just practiced my blind throwing um, and it worked out quite well I only split a couple of stitches but uh, in the break, I hurried to the bathroom and I fixed a couple of them in, in the bright light. <laughs> um, yes, but now they're finished. I'm happy, they fit well. And um, I used most of the sock blank because I uh, knit a very long leg and I'm happy with that. Another finished object is one that I started since I last saw you. I feel so so weird when I'm saying that because I didn't I don't actually see you guys. So I I started this project since my last episode and I've already finished it. And it's this crochet purse and wow what a lot of color. <laughs> um it's made with Scapius Calista yarn, which is a kind of worsted or iron weight cotton yarn, non-mercerized, so it doesn't have that sheen. Uh, it's really, really pretty. And I made a little bag and it's closed with buttons. I got these buttons with uh, Molly Makes magazine ones. This is the inside. 
I just crocheted the squares together with a single crochet. Um, this is the back. I try to use as many colors as possible. It's not really my style, but um, it's not gonna be for me, so so I always uh, I can experiment a little bit when I'm making gifts. Um, this is gonna be for uh, my friend's mom. I have a Vietnamese friend and uh, she's in Vietnam at the moment. We're gonna be visiting her in a couple of weeks time. And uh, I actually uh, met her parents two years ago already. Uh, we went on holiday together to Indonesia and um, well, my Vietnamese friend was living here at the time. And we went on holiday together and we decided to meet her parents there. So yeah, that was fun. And her mom uh, was always um, like, so I'm always crocheting or knitting and also on holiday and her mom was always like, Ooh! uh, you know, we couldn't really talk to each other because she only knows Vietnamese and like a couple of English words like hello and yes. And yeah, <laughs> uh, but she was always really uh, enthusiastic when, um, when she saw something I crocheted. And one of those things was this little purse. I use this to keep like medicine, like for travel. Um, yeah, just emergency stuff. And so this is the colorful uh, colorful version. They're the same pattern. I made this one a little bit bigger though. Like I used bigger yarn and I added one extra round into this square. And I'm writing up the pattern as we speak. And it will be up on the blog, I hope next week. Um, yeah, so I can't wait to give it to her and I hope she likes it. And very quickly, because I haven't told you about this shawl yet, this is a crochet shawl that I designed for Simply Crochet, I think. Yeah, um, it's made with Scapius Katona, which is a mercerized cotton yarn. And it was published, yeah, last year in spring or summer I think summer probably and it's called the petals aplenty shawl and it really has petals aplenty because there are so many flowers here and um, you can imagine it was a pain to sew in these ends <laughs> my even my boyfriend helped me with this because I was on a deadline at the time um, anyway um, it's really Nice airy shawl for summer, but heavy enough uh, for the summer evenings. So it's really nice and it adds a little bit of zing to your outfit. Um, so it was published in Simply Crochet last year, but I will be publishing it in my Ravelry store as a separate pattern very soon. I actually should have done that already, but uh, time, you know because I have had some uh, baby news uh, in the family and with co-workers so I am in baby stuff knitting mode so uh, I also knit these little baby socks a couple of weeks ago still have to weave in the ends I think they're they're like huge but um, you know if the baby's coming now then he might not want to wear socks in summer. So, so yes, I try to make them the correct size for when they are like six months old and it's winter time. So anyway, I knit those socks and I am knitting a baby sweater. <laughs> There's yarn everywhere. Uh, one of my co-workers is, um, he's not having a baby, but his wife is, and um, they're expecting a boy. So I've knit him this sweater. I still have to do the sleeves. 
and the pattern is flax by tin can knits and uh, I remember uh, I think it was for my 3000 subscriber giveaway that I asked you what is your uh, most loved knit and a lot of you guys said it was the flax sweater by tin can knits and I was like what is a sweater so I decided to look it up and they have like a huge range of sizes so I picked the smallest size which is zero to six months and it's super cute uh, I only um, they said to make the body five inches below uh, or to knit on for five inches after um, separating for the sleeves but I thought that was like super long so so I shortened that a little bit I looked up some uh, baby standard uh, sizing uh, guides on the craft council website so yeah i think it's really cute i'm using merino soft from scapius and it's the same yarn that i used for my crochet blanket um the last dance on the beach blanket I finished it a couple of months ago and um, yeah I still had some yarn left over it's 50% uh, uh, superwash merino 25% micro and 25% uh, acrylic uh, so it can be washed oh at 30 degrees so well. anyway it can be machine washed which is what you want for a baby knit so I'll be finishing this in a couple of days because I really have to gift it uh, in about a week. <laughs> so I'll get cracking on the sleeves, but, but baby knits are so, so fast. So yeah, I'll finish this in a heartbeat. And I really love the garter stitch panel right here. I think that's a really nice touch. The, the only thing I want to say, because flax is a really beginner um, type sweater pattern um, but sometimes I feel like the explanation could be a little bit more clear um, for example you start with the ribbing and that in the row afterwards uh, they say um, increase however many stitches uh, divided evenly across the round and of course you can do the math but I feel like they could have gone that extra step to kind of do that for you anyway um, yes so it's lovely yarn to work with the merino soft and um, Yes, I, I'll probably still have a little bit left after this, so <laughs> maybe I can um, make another scrap project with it sometime. I have another sweater project going on right now, but this is adult sized for me, and it's my no frills sweater. I actually haven't made that much progress on it. That's a little bit bigger. It's nice to work on, but uh, I do. Um, I like to work on it when the weather is not that warm, because otherwise my fingers are so sticky sometimes and uh, something's gross. But working with mohair in the sun, not really my fave, but I'm really liking how it knits up, and I really should cake up. The next skein of mohair because I really should be alternating skeins but I am not doing that at the moment um, yeah I'm just uh, I have to start doing that now I just have to otherwise there might be like a line across the chest and I don't really want that my next project I'm really excited about because I am using my own hand dyed yarns um, yeah, so I've dyed a lot of yarns over the last 
three weeks and or a lot you know for my standards I mean there's like 20 skeins but um, I thought to give him a try before I sell them <laughs> well, so I have um, cast on a project with these two colors and uh, these are both dyed with matter root um, and it's on a sock base so it's a fingering weight yarn it consists of 60% wool 20% rami which is a plant fiber and 20% mulberry silk and just trying to get a feel for the yarn um, and give you some advice on what projects you can use it for because uh, the company I bought it from is marketing this as a sock yarn and I totally agree that this is um, a suitable sock yarn but um, it is much less um, it feels much less woolly or can I say soft? No, it still feels reasonably soft, but uh, it just has a kind of linen-y feel to it or a cottony feel. Um, it doesn't feel like there's a lot of stretch in this wool, in this yarn, I should say, because it is 60% wool. Uh, so I am knitting, or I have knit one sock and I'm alternating colors and I, I'm doing this simple stranded color work pattern kind of resembles little hearts and I really like it uh, I've done a twisted rib once in a while I never really like twisted rib but I thought the stitch definition would be perfect for this uh, technique and yeah so i decided to make shorty socks so ankle socks because while i was knitting it i felt like hmm okay kind of feels it just it kind of feels like cotton it isn't cotton but it kind of feels like that and uh so i thought well if i make long socks with this they wouldn't be suitable to wear in summer. Well, actually, I would wear long socks in summer, but I thought I want to make shorty socks with it because the yarn just feels very cool. Um, and I thought that would be perfect for something summery to wear. And I just love this little pattern. I will be releasing this pattern uh, when I get back from my holiday. And I actually wanted to film a tutorial uh, uh, while knitting the second sock today, but my to-do list for today is already way too long, so I'm gonna have to postpone that to next week, probably. Um, yes, so I'm just using these two colors. And I just took 50, skein, 50 grams of one skein and another 50 grams of the other skein and the can't find them at the moment but the other 50 grams of the original skeins are still available so uh, they will be uh, put in the shop this weekend probably either tomorrow which is Friday or Saturday I will have my shop update but yeah I'm not sure whether I can edit this video this fast so I'm gonna have to put it on a screen later um, yeah, so this yarn, I'm gonna tell more about these yarns later, but I figured that this yarn might be a very good crochet yarn because, um, because it feels very cottony and, um, I would really like crocheting with this yarn because it's not fluffy at all and... You know, it would be perfect for one of those mesh style market bags, you know those? Because it is really, really strong. It has silk in it, but it's really strong. And that Rami fiber is also supposed to be really strong because it's, um, it's meant to uh, replace the nylon usually found in sock yarns. So 
uh, you can use it as a sock yarn and that would make it an all natural sock yarn which I'm really excited about. It's also non super wash so make sure to wash these things by hand in cool water. And yeah, so I just figured this might be amazing for crochet stuff as well. Yes, but more about that later because I have some new yarns to show you. Um, so I did some more dyeing this week and last week and I experimented with cochineal, which are beetles. They are cactus beetles and you know they're dried <laughs> and you can grind them into a powder and then make dye stock with it so that's what i did this week and i recorded a little bit of footage i'm gonna put that in right now hi i had a lot of fun recording these natural dyeing vlogs um the past podcast episode so i decided to do some more vlogs and today well tonight i am preparing a dye bath with pomegranate um i bought a pomegranate i've not completely eaten it yet i just eat it in my yogurt or salad or whatever so um and there are quite a lot of pomegranate seeds in here so i usually don't eat it um in one go uh, but I have heard that with pomegranate skin you can get a lovely yellow dye and I have preserved some in some water you can already see that the water is turning yellow so I'm just gonna well not boil this but uh, heat it up until 80 degrees celsius for about an hour and then i'm gonna let it sit until tomorrow and continue dying so just putting it in the pot and yeah i'll add a little bit more water to that usually i'll try to refill the container I had the dye material in and I'll um, use that to refill any water because there might still be some residue, some dye residue in the containers. Anyway, I'm just gonna heat this up on low heat and see what happens. So it's two days later and here we are. Uh, I just put the yarn in this morning. So the day before yesterday, I kind of simmered the pomegranate and I left it uh, all the day yesterday just, you know, at room temperature in the dye pot. And this morning I strained out the pomegranate and put in the yarn. I'm using the Merino sport weight base for this one. Uh, as you can see, it's a lovely shade of yellow. Although, you know, it always kind of differs when I take it out, so it'll be interesting to see. So the yarn hasn't completely cooled down yet, so I'm gonna add some cold tap water just to speed up the process of cooling down, and then I will hang it out to dry outside. And the dye water, or the dye bath, from the pomegranate uh, was actually very murky it wasn't clear at all so I found that a little bit weird but you know it as you know it didn't look very promising but then now the color looks really nice but yeah with natural dyeing is always a surprise because it may look fantastic in the pot like with the nettles that I dyed it looked like a really beautiful green and then I take it out and it's just almost not dyed at all so so I've decided the next dye material I want to dye with is cochineal which are beetles and I have to crush these and I'll get a lovely pink color. Okay, so they smell really weird. But anyway, is the scale on? Yes. So uh, I found a recipe which says to use 25 grams 
for 450 grams of wool. So that would mean I would have to have five grams to dye 100 grams of wool. Oh, it's not moving. So this is still zero grams. Uh, maybe I should get a more precise scale. Because, you know, I don't really want to use as much. I actually think I could start out with this. But, you know, it sucks because I don't really know how much it is. Um, yeah. Anyway, let's go and take this and grind it to powder. So I have a big mortar for this. So I'm going to put in... Well, just some of the cushioning and see if I can so it's not that difficult to grind not not as with the matter root and you can already see it's becoming a little bit red and I'm just gonna be putting this into this measuring cup there and there was still a little bit of moisture in there Wow look at that that's a really rich color. So I actually want to use this dye pot for that. So I'm gonna um, throw this in a different basin right here. So I've put it in a different basin and this will actually allow it to cool a little bit more quickly. You can see there's still a lot of dye in the water. But uh, this is already a very light color, it seems, so I'm not sure that this would have any more dye potential. So make sure to really rinse the dye pot before adding a new color. Just added some more water in here. Oh my god! It's such a vibrant pink. Oh my god. I don't want to leave any dye material in here, so. All right, then I'll have to heat this for about 20 minutes. So this is the cochineal after having simmered for a while and it's really dark, um, really saturated. And since the dye stuff in there is really fine and powdery, I'm not going to be able to strain it with a regular strainer. So I'm going to use a old tea towel and I've already used it to strain out some dye, which is why it's discolored. So I think I'm going to try and fit in kind of elastic band around this and then strain it i have never done this before so yeah let's see if that works so the dye isn't going all the way through by itself so i'm just gently pushing it with my wooden spoon you can see some of it has gone really thick so yeah i really want to strain this out and i'm just going to Get some more dye with a cup and just strain it through little by little. It's looking so black, so I'm really <laughs> kind of confused or surprised maybe. Because I don't know where the black comes from, but I guess it's also from the beetle. So I've rinsed or I've strained all of the dye through this tea towel now. And actually, every so often, there's a little a little bit of goo <laughs> that's just it won't strain through so I'm saving it in this 
cup because I don't know it seems to have dye potential so I'm gonna put that in the same dye pot again and see if it might give me a different color as for the strained dye quite a bit right there and I think that this dye is so concentrated that I'm gonna dilute it even further that I'm, maybe I'm just gonna use small um, small amounts of it in my dye bath there I've added some more water to it and I haven't rinsed the pot because it's the same uh, dye material and I'm just gonna see what I end up with because if I can get a different color from this well you know then it's an experiment that's succeeded and if not then okay I know that for the future I can just throw this away but it seems that it still has some dye potential so I'm not ready to waste all of that so let's get this cloth off and you can see you know there's a lot of the black goo on this but also there's a little bit of uh, pink um, on the edges so yes it's very promising so I'm adding a little bit of the cochineal dye in the dye pot and the rest of it I'm saving in this um, plastic container Ooh, maybe it's too much yeah it's too much um just gonna throw this in there as well there I realize I'm not being really scientific about this and that maybe I should be measuring things more. I'm adding two skeins to this pot. One is the Silk Rami uh, Merido Suckland and one is the Lalalin Yarn which is 100% wool. Ooh, look at that. Okay, I'm gonna put them in. Look at that color, oh my gosh. Okay, I think this is about enough water or maybe I should add a tad more. Yeah, I should add a little bit more water just so that everything is nice and um, below the surface of the water. Uh, make sure the tie wraps are close to the surface. Um, yeah, so let's add some heat. I am so excited about this cochineal because it seems like this stuff has a lot of dye potential which is good because it is the most expensive dye material that I got. Um, I think it was about... I can't remember now but I think I spent about the same amount of money on 100 grams of cochineal as on one kilo of matter root and the matter root was twice as expensive as the one kilo of chamomile flowers so <laughs> and the matter root is you know it's amazing i love those coral shades and there's a lot of dye potential in there i could do dye bath after dye bath with just one amount of you know of, of 30 grams of the uh, matter root uh, and now the cochineal if you use less than one gram, so yes, it looks very promising. -y. Um, so I'm gonna turn on the heat as well for the <laughs> cochineal goop that I that I was not able to strain. So yeah, fingers crossed for that one, because you know it might be nothing. It might be something. You know, that's what these experiments are about. As for my pomegranate a dye bath, I think the yarn is just about room temperature. 
So I'm gonna take it out and I'm gonna um, kind of, you know, ring it and then I'm gonna go outside and like swing it really, really uh, like <laughs> fiercely. <laughs> Um, so that the water is kind of, it's kind of like a centrifuge, you know, or like a salad spinner. Hello, I'm here. Yeah, um, yeah. so kind of acting like the drying cycle in a washing machine, kind of like whipping the water out. Anyway, and that also gets all the kinks out of the yarn and yeah. <laughs> can't film that um no i'll have to get someone to help me but it's sunny outside so i'm gonna let it out dry in the sun i know that's not too good probably i should probably have a drying spot in the shade anyway we'll see we'll see Alrighty, so exciting stuff has happened. <laughs> it's about, I think, two hours later since my last vlog, and I want to show you the cochineal bath. Not sure if it turns up, uh, but it started out as a really bright pink, and now it's kind of a more mauvey, purpley pink, so that's really nice. And, um, this is uh, the result of the black uh, kind of uh, cochineal goop that I uh, boiled again and strained again. And it's hard to capture the color, but it is actually kind of purple. So I'm gonna grab a new skein to put in there. Oh, this is another one of the Merino Silk Rami blend. That does look promising. It might turn up really light, but still worth a shot. I can always over dye it, so just making sure the yarn is okay. That seems to be all right. And this yarn still has to ooh, see. <laughs> The camera is fogging up, so it still has to cool down a little bit. So I'll probably be able to rinse these tonight. So another half an hour later, and this water that was black at first is now a really light purple. And it's looking really promising. And actually, this one, so... This is the dye material cooked twice. It's not looking that not looking that much different from these two skeins. So it will be interesting to compare these once these are dry. The water is still not cool enough to get them out. And if I add more water, I don't know. I just uh, have to be a little bit more patient. Natural dyeing is really long process but you can do lots of things in the meantime as you were able to see um i did some cochineal dyeing and i was really really excited about it uh the color did change a little bit when i when i was out of the pot so uh i believe you could really see this bright bubblegum pink uh when i was in the dye pot and then after half an hour it just turned to this bluish purple. I'm gonna take the cochineal um, skeins to show you. So these are all of the skeins I dyed with cochineal and they vary far from really, well, not really, really saturated, but this is the saturated one I have. And oh, I just love this color. So it's like a lilac. Yeah, just like a lilac, purplish, pink, uh, like hydrangea flowers. We call them hortensia in uh, Dutch. It's really, you know, purple like that. I just love it. And it's a little bit variegated. 
this a little bit. Um, and But I also have really light ones. So this is really, really light purple with a few purple streaks here and there. And this one I'm calling What's for Dessert? <laughs> All oh, right, and this one was called Love Potion. Mm. Uh, I have another What's for this Dessert right here. Yeah. So this is also a really light uh, dye of cochineal, and um, oh, I just love it so much. I love this base, this um, DK base. I love it because it's super wooly and um it still has lanolin in it and i although through the dyeing some of it gets you know simmered out um you can still feel the lanolin and even when i dye other skeins without lanolin in the same pot i can feel the lanolin on those skeins as well now and it's just, oh, it makes for such a lovely knitting experience because that lanolin, it just softens your hands incredibly. Um, yeah, so here's another one on that same base, on the same woolly base. And this one is called Luscious Lilac. It's just a little bit in between the darker shade of Love Potion and the lighter shade of what's for dessert. <laughs> I really had fun coming up with these colorway names. Uh, so Luscious Lilac. And so this one was in the same dye bath, or at least has the, has the same kind of result. Um, but this is on the Merino base, which is 100% non-superwash Merino, 300 meters per 100 grams, so it's about sport weight. Um, I also have dyed some more of the sock yarn with silk and rami, uh, so the one that was really suitable for crochet as well. Although, you, uh, this would be perfect for crochet blankets and pillows and hats and stuff. Uh, even the DK weight, although this only has 220 meters, so for crochet it might be a little bit, um, yeah, a little bit short. <laughs> yeah, I would knit with these. I would knit mittens with these and hats and, oh, yes, oh, so luscious. Or I would use it in my scrappy blanket. I knit up kind of worsted iron weight yarn into um, into squares for my scrappy blanket and this would be perfect for that um, yes and here I have the sock weight yarn uh, dyed with cochineal and this is pretty much all over purple so it's a tonal oh this is also called love potion so it's kind of the same tone as this And I have two more, and these are more variegated, and I've called this colorway macaron. I actually thought there, I actually wanted to call them macaroon, but macaroons are the really puffy ones with uh, with lots of coconut, and that's not what I meant. I meant the really uh, like um, French. Uh, really high class cookies, so the, the macaron. Um, so that's what they're called, and I'm not sure if you can see, but there are some uh, white spots here and there. Uh, it's because I twisted these canes and then put them into the dye, dye pot, and yeah, it makes for a really nice result. I love these. Oh. I also have some other new skeins. Oh, this is the one I showed last week. It's the Sunshine Daisies Buttermellow dyed with chamomile. Um, 
This one is new. It's dyed with pomegranate. I believe I also showed that in the vlog. I was soaking the pomegranate skins. So this one is really interesting. It has multiple shades of yellow in here. I don't think the camera's really picking it up because it's um it's just a really nice color. <laughs> it's just a really nice color. And there are some lemony um yellows in here and some more mustardy yellows in here it's really really beautiful but i want to find oh yeah this one so this one is kind of a golden shade you see that so it's kind of an orangey yellow and this one i dyed with uh well first i dyed it with avocado seeds but lately the avocado seeds have not been working for me I used to get lovely pink shades on my cottons and then now now I only get like light peachy oranges from them and then you know it's really saturated the dye water and then I put the skein in and then it just absorbs all color but the skein stays like super light orange. So what I did is I also twisted that skein and put it in a different dye bath. And that dye bath has resulted in this orange tone. And that was, that was uh, made with annatto seeds. And I'm not sure where it comes from. It's also kind of fruit seed. Uh, and they use it to dye some, you know, they use it as a food food coloring uh, ingredient in some Filipino uh, recipes. And I work at an Asian food company, that's why I had these. Um, yeah, but the uh, purchase department had some samples and one of them knew that I was into like natural, um, natural dyes. So... So she said, here, you can have this and uh, you can have some fun with it. So that's what this one resulted in. And it's really, really beautiful colorway. I only have one of these. Well, I only have one of most. <laughs> and this one is called the Golden Hour. Kind of like the hour before sunset where you can take beautiful pictures. That's what this one is called. But I was looking for another one that I have dyed since my last episode. Yes. Because I was just taking pictures of this for the shop. And it doesn't really show up on camera. I also dyed a lot of matter. You see? A whole basket full of yarns dyed with matter. Look at that lovely coral. I've named these... Coral Crush and Peach Perfect. So the darker ones are called Coral Crush. It's really uh, showing up really bright on the screen. But. And the lighter ones are Peach Perfect. And I also have the sock set in here somewhere. Oh, and this one is a little bit darker, Coral Crush. I love this one. I want to keep it, but I won't, I promise. <laughs> uh, this is the sock set that I... Uh, so it's the very same yarn that I'm using for my socks. And this will be enough to make a full pair of socks. I was looking for... Wait, am I looking for you? No. <laughs> this is another chamomile one. It's called Ginger because I think it looks like ginger root. But anyway, so these, yes, I think it's picking up, yeah. Oh, look how bright that is, it's amazing. And I bet you can't guess what I used to dye these. I used the bushy leaves, the green leaves from Carrot Top. And I am so excited about that. So who knew, right? That you could dye three skeins with Carrot Top. 
Uh, so yeah, it's it's called carrot top number one because this is the the first dye bath that I uh, got from the carrot top, and then uh, so I took this one out and I put this one into the very same water, but a lot of the dye had already gone out, so that's in this game. So this one is really light. It's like it's like banana, you know like vanilla but I've called this one carrot top number two because it's the second dye bath and then what I did so the color was almost out of the dye bath completely but what I did was I boiled the leaves or the carrot top green stuff again but I let it sit for 24 hours and I got a more green shade and that's what resulted in this so it's slightly more green but see it could fit in between these and these I am selling as a set because they are really meant to be together and I feel like having these with this really makes this one shine as well and yes isn't this amazing like i feel that you could make entire fade sets with the same kind of vegetable or whatever you use for for making dye and then because they're made from the same ingredient but in different you know, different subtleties or different, how do you call this? So this is much, much more strong than this one. But because they're made from the same dye material, they go together. Look how well these go together. And this could be made into like a child's garment, maybe well, they don't fade as well as to use for like, um, like the no fade or like the so faded sweater, but more like a, a gradient color block thing. Like you could, um, you could do pillows with these, um, or also use them in the blanket or yeah, toddler clothing or maybe hats and mittens set or a scarf or a shawl that would make a huge shawl um yeah so lots of possibilities for these and um yes really excited about these um all of the matter because it's just yeah i showed most of the matter last time but because you guys were all so um excited about those and I only had about four skeins at that time so I decided to dye up some more um, but do keep in mind there are only about 20 skeins available and so um, <laughs> this will be a very very small shop update and I'm just trying to see how things go I mean I am I'm having a lot of fun at the moment uh, even though it's a lot of work you know I have to of course um, get the materials get the yarns more than the yarns which is also like I have to measure the alum I have to heat it up in water then add enough cool water so that I can put in the yarn so that the yarn doesn't uh, felt and then I have to let that sit for two hours, then I have to let that cool down, I have to prepare the dye bath, which, uh, you know, uh, I have to boil the ingredients for like one hour uh, at, at least, then I have to let that cool down or add it up water so that I can add the yarn, then I have to boil that for at least an hour, and then I have to let it cool down, and then I have to rinse it and wash it, rinse it again, and let it uh, dry. And then I have to skein it, which, you know, 
uh, the first couple of scans I did were really terrible. So <laughs> I've re-scanned all of those. Um, and I just hope there are no knots in these. Uh, but, and then, you know, the writing of the tags and the photography. And I hope, I hope the color, the, the photographs will portray the colors well enough. So, I will be selling these yarns in my Etsy store just because, you know, I will never be able to use them all. I'm just having way too much fun dyeing them. And, um, yeah, I just uh, want to make other people happy with my yarns. So, I'm gonna sell them for a very reduced price because I would usually sell these for 20 euros, I think, per 100 grams not you know to um i have to kind of be on the same level as the other indie dyers so because if there's one person selling skeins for 20 euros and then another person selling skeins for 15 euros you know they're all gonna buy that person's skeins and then the other person will you know have to lower prices or whatever so i don't want to be uh competitive like that but I am gonna start out with this batch being just for 15 euros a piece because I cannot guarantee the quality quality just yet uh, I don't know for certain how wash fast and how light fast these dyes are um, you know especially for for the things that I've foraged myself, so especially, you know, the carrot top. I, you know, I've mordanted the yarn, I've rinsed them well enough. Um, but yeah, some color can come out. Um, you have to make sure that you don't expose them to sunlight for a long time. Like, uh, okay, you can, of course, wear your hat netted items, but um, if you if you store your items, be sure that it's in a in a closed space um, and not an open rack or anything. And if you're washing your nets or crochet items for the first time, be sure to do it in cool water. We'll actually always wash them in cool water because it's not super wash. Uh, always wash them separately and to be super duper extra sure that the color does not leak out you can wash them with a little bit of vinegar added um, the first couple of times um, yes but actually you know these colors should stay put especially the matter uh, chamomile and cochineal as people have used those for thousands of years and also because I don't know if there are any knots in them. I, I mean, I don't see the knots, but... Uh, and I have wound these two. And I didn't find it all too difficult. But, um, yes. Just because it's my first batch, I'm just gonna offer these for 15 euros. Just because I don't feel uh, that I should charge full price for them just yet. That's about all for my upcoming shop update. I will put the date and time on the screen here. So I could put that in while editing and so you won't miss out. Now the last couple of things I want to show you for this podcast episode is some new yarn. And yes, so I just showed you all of my yarn, but I've also bought some yarn over the last week. I went to a yarn store in the northern part of the Netherlands in Meppel and the, the yarn store is called the Haak Garage, um, so crochet garage. Uh, it's called that way because it was a car dealer uh, in the past and um, that was actually, well she told us, I think it was her grandfather or her great grandfather who had the uh, car dealer um, garage and uh, um, it was passed on to her and you know she made a uh, yarn stop 
yarn store out of it. So yay! And they stocked some hand dyed yarns there from Wol met Verve. Here it is, Wol met Verve, Kit Silk Lace. It's 70%. 72% kid mohair, 28% silk, and it's beautiful. So beautiful. The longer I look at it, the more I fall in love. It's so many colors in here, and yeah, just love this. And I got home, and I noticed this skein of Bärenwolle, and... Uh, Vicky from Bärenwolle doesn't dye yarn anymore. Uh, she has um, found her new passion, which is photography. Uh, but I was lucky enough to um, get one of her skeins before she stopped dyeing them. And I think it would actually go with this yarn really, really well. And this one actually looks a lot like the cochineal stuff I've just dyed, so <laughs> I thought that was really fun. I thought of knitting these two into a shawl with panels of this merino and panels of mohair. Uh, so just using them single strandedly, um, but I don't have an idea yet which pattern or maybe I should make my own pattern, so I don't know about those. But I do know that I really, really love these yarns together. And I bought some more yarns. And these are from my friend Sandra from Craftfulness. And uh, Sandra also dyed the yarn for my Melly cardigan, which I finished just a couple of weeks ago. And she posted some sock sets and I really, really love this one. So I decided to get it. I'm gonna make socks with these, but I don't know when. I really love the red speckles in these. Yes, yeah, so lots of yarn this week. Yeah, and it will be the last episode for a while because I will be going on a holiday for a couple of weeks. Um, yes, yeah, so I probably will be posting again in July, but I will be active on Instagram and on my blog, so be sure to follow me there as well. And yeah, and of course, I will be posting on Instagram and in the Ravelry group about the crochet along that we'll be having, so keep your eyes open for that. Thank you very much for watching as always, and I hope to see you again next time. Bye-bye.